that you can find me online should be down there. Um, thank you very much to everybody who watched my first episode. It was lovely to receive some really nice comments saying, come back, speak to us again. Uh, and if this is your very first time watching, uh, then thank you for dropping by and checking me out. I've got a new microphone this time, so Lynn, can you hear me? <laughs> And it's not in my lap either, so the dog's not going to sit on it for the for half the episode either. <laughs> but I'm really tempted just to tap on it. And if you're listening with headphones on, then um, that might not be so comfortable. <laughs> I just had a wee stop to take my jumper off because it is raining and a bit dismal out there. Uh, but I was getting a little bit warm. Uh, but anyway, so thank you very much for coming back. Let's get into it. What was I going to talk about today? Oh, that's the problem is that you start these things and all of a sudden you have a brain freeze, don't you? So one of the things that I've been really interested in this week is um, mixing fibres for different colours. A while ago I watched a DVD and it was an interweave one by Dead Men's and it was called... I wrote it down. I wrote it down. That was lucky. I thought I was going to remember all this, but you don't, do you? It was called Yarn Design for Spinners. And it wasn't so much about the structure of the actual yarn, like how many plies, or whether it was woolen or worsted spun. She was talking a lot about colours and putting colours together to make different colours without having to dye a whole lot of fibre. And dyeing is something that I've had a few traumatic experiences with, so... I'm kind of keen to avoid that at the moment. I'm sure I'll come back to it at some point and have a few more experiences. But while the trauma is still fresh in my mind, I think I'm going to avoid all those chemicals. But anyway, so I have borrowed a friend's drum carter and have been playing around with that for the last few weeks. Uh, and if you're not a spinner and you don't know what a drum carter is, let me just... I'll see if I can pick this big thing up and not knock anything. Right, so, ooh, we're quite close up. That's, that's the back side of it. <laughs> Let's do it this way, here we go. Whoops. So all the fibre comes in this side, and you turn this handle here by my head that I'm pointing to with my nose right now, um, and it, it blends all the fibres together on those two drums with all of these pins pointing up. So that's basically the philosophy of it. And I had been playing around with my hand cards and been really interested in the way that the colours blended together. So I thought this would be a fun little experiment. So I've been making bats all week. And a bat is this big rectangle of fibre. This is the first one I made. Actually, I made a really horrendously coloured bat. And uh, and it was a big one too, so I split it in half and tried to make it better. I'm not sure if I have, there's a bit of orange and all sorts in there, but I'm not that keen on that one. That was one of the first ones that I made, actually. The other one went a little bit greener. These were the first two that I made. Not so fussed on them. But I did get better at it. I just had bits and pieces of fibre, some merino and other other things that I had lying around that I was playing with. So this was the next one. I actually quite like this. With the, it looks, does it look blue to you or purple? It is actually purple and yellow with some lovely sort of mushroomy coloured masim in there. And masim is a, is a Yorkshire sheep that's local to us. So I like to, like to do some things with local products. So that was the next one, and I'm, that that was a much better attempt. And then, these last, these ones, well these aren't the last ones, there's some more I want to talk about, but I'll yammer on about them in a minute. I really like these because all of the fun is on the, ooh, it's all stuck together. All of the fun is on the inside with all that pink. So I think that'll be really really fun spinning but 
what I wanted to try to do was to blend some colours together to see if I could get a very specific colour. And let me put this down. See, I've learned from last time. I'm, I think I'm a bit more savvy about this, but if the dog knocks over the camera again, they will know I've learned nothing. So, right, so the last thing I wanted to do was to blend a specific colour. And I chose this really well it's a bit grotty now this card again I've realized but it's a favorite do you notice that when something's a favorite you don't realize how rough it's starting to look but I really like this burgundy color the sort of brownie reddy and so that's what the color that I wanted to try and and blend together and with what I had just lying around the house this was as far as I got which is getting there but I think I actually, I had a lot of light coloured fibres, so the red I started with was kind of a fire engine red, and I didn't have a lot of brown, so I was trying to make it more browny by adding in yellow and blue, but they were all quite light tones, and I think I could have been more successful if I'd started off with a darker, darker colours, so a darker red and a more sort of goldy yellow and a darker blue um, but I don't for a first attempt I don't think that's too bad I'm going to try spinning it up and just see how how the yarn looks um, but that was loads of fun but unfortunately I have to give the card back this week so that's the end of that little experiment for now um, not that I don't have a lot of other little experiments going on as well so <laughs> So that's been really exciting. The other thing that I'm really interested in at the moment is the the Woolly Wormhead Mystery Hat Along. And this is my effort at the end. If you've done this, don't tell me how it ends because I haven't looked. I know it was November time we were all doing this, but I'm just a little bit behind. If you haven't done this, I'm sorry, this is just a big time spoiler, so... <laughs> Mind you, the pattern's out now, so you can go and have a look at that. You're just as behind as I am. But I've been really enjoying that. I've put these are folded over brims, and I put another colour in there because I think I might be close to running out of yarn. So I've just put that little bit of blue in there. Um, and I think I'm nearly finished the second clue and onto the crown shaping. But I love this yarn. It's beautiful. Now Bob told me last time I held things too close to the camera and then you couldn't see anything and it wouldn't focus. Let me just... How's that? Is that better? I think that is better, isn't it? Woohoo! <laughs> so, this yarn... I'll find the tag in here. Oh, look! Look how organised I am. I've got everything just right this time. Can I get this one in? Let's have a look. This is a yarn from is it going to work anyway it's a la la yarn from the little grey sheep and this is a lady that farms Gotland sheep and they're they're sort of like a silvery coloured beast I think they're Swedish they have, a, they have a longer wool and while I was preparing for this I realised I actually had some of the locks in my spinning bucket so let me just show you what it's a lovely curly curly fibre whoops I'm throwing it on the floor they're springing out hold on here we go look at this now we'll focus over here these lovely springy locks and they come in all sorts of all sorts of colors so they go right from white through silver to the to this sort of blacky color um, and it's beautiful because the the yarn has a lovely luster which is what we say when we're talking about shine I suppose it's got a really long staple, so it, it's a really lightly spun 
yarn, there's not much twist in it. And the way that this, I believe the farmer gets another lady to over dye it for her. The way she's over dyed that grey colour is just stunning. There's little pops of blue and burgundy and pinks and all sorts of things in there. As I say, it is lightly spun, so it's not a yarn that you want to undo and re-knit very often. Um, but I'm, I'm so enjoying that. It's just so pretty. I really want a sweater's worth of this yarn. So maybe that's something to think about if they're at Yarn Dale again this year. Right, let me put all my locks away. Back in the bag so they don't pop all over the place. Actually, well, I've got this on my lap. This is a bit of shameless self-promotion. I have a little Etsy bag, uh, a little Etsy bag, a little Etsy shop where I sell bags. And this was the first ever prototype of the industrious knitter's bag. Uh, and I made this for me so I could knit on the tube with just this little bag dangling off and the sock hanging out. And I didn't lose anything when I was jumping on and off. I actually made it out of a friend's curtain. So that was the first one ever that I'm still using and still enjoying. I guess it's because, like I say, it's a dear friend's curtain. So you might sort of think the fabric's a bit ho-hum, but I've got all those memories that go with it. And um, actually, yeah, this is the bag that I made this week. These are the industrious knitting bags that are going in the shop this week. So by the time this goes out, this should be in the shop as well. There's pockets is in there. Oh, yes. Anyway, end of shameless self-promotion, let's carry on. I'll put all this away. I've started organised, I might as well stay organised. The last thing I've been doing is sock knitting, which is nothing new. I'm I'm sure you've got a, got, got a pair of socks on the go all the time and I tend to keep them in the car so that when the hairy man is driving along I can just whip my sock out and have something to work on. Um, and so I've just finished this pair of socks actually. I've got a very rudimentary set of blockers that are made out of a cardboard box so they're just sort of, I don't know, Perhaps I need to, I made them for a smaller pair of socks actually, so perhaps I need to make a bigger pair. But, yes, so these are the ones that I've just finished. This is a Zalba ball, and this is some opal solids. I was worried that I was going to run out of the Zalba ball. I'm always worried that I'm going to run out of yarn, because I think I have massive feet, but they're only a 7 UK, and I can usually get um, a pair of socks comfortably out of 100 grams worth of yarn. But I had started doing the yarn to do a colour work experiment, which is somewhere else at the moment. Um, and so I didn't actually have the full ball to start with. I probably could have done the heels in the, um, in the Zalba ball, but I thought that looked rather nice. But I have been experimenting with sock construction because for Christmas, <coughs> pardon me, I was given this book and... You probably saw this on a number of other podcasts um, before Christmas, Sock Architecture by Lara Neal. It's a marvellous book. Get it. Get it. <laughs> if you're a big, beginner sock knitter, it's probably not for you um, because it doesn't much go through the basics of how to do it. This is more of a I want to perfect my sock knitting sort of book or I want to try something new. Um, and so I've been really enjoying this. And one of the, the things I really like is she has, I think it's at least four or five different toe shapings. And then another four or five different heel constructions, which is really interesting. And she has a little grid that talks about what shape your foot is and what toe or heel construction is most likely to suit you. So you can really tailor a pair of socks to a specific pair of feet, which is great. So I've made a couple of pairs now, sort of using the information from the book. And this was the first pair. This is just some opal, sweet and spicy, I think it's peach. Uh, and... 
again on my nice cardboard Walker's Crisp box <laughs> sock blockers. Um, and this, I tried this. Oh, it's my first ever heel flap, actually. What do you think of that? I had always done toe up shop socks due to the fear of not having enough yarn. And I had always done a short row heel, and that had been fine. But this was my first ever heel flap with a gusset. Uh, the rest of the world knows that this is great heel shaping, and I wish I'd been doing this all along. But of course, if you're doing toe up socks, it's well, it's not so obvious as to how you do it, but now that I've sort of lost a bit of my running out of yarn paranoia, perhaps I'll do this a bit more often. So that was fun. And then I used the swirl toe heel shaping, which kind of decreases evenly around the toe. Um, and I really like it. I have kind of, the end of my foot is what, Lara Neal refers to it as a round foot so my big toe is smaller than the second toe so that it gets sort of a round shape uh, and I find that the swirl toe really fits nicely so I may not try any other toes from the book now I've found this one first off that I really like I might just do this one forever <laughs> uh, perhaps not in the, in the interest of experimentation I should try something different but anyway, so that was the first sock. And then the next sock, I wanted to try my first afterthought heel. And so I did the swirl toe again and then went straight through and finished to the end. Uh, and then I decided to try the same swirl on the heel. I hope you can see that. Let me just refocus this. It's dark, so it's a bit different, the dark colour difficult to see. I'm not sure I did it completely correctly because in usual Lee style I read the book several weeks before I actually came to do the heel and I was sitting around with friends and just thought and was knitting on these so I just thought I'll do them now and I'm not sure I've done them exactly to the instructions but they fit okay what I don't like is because there's no gusset or shaping through here is that this is kind of stretched when it's on my foot. So I don't think I would do it exactly like this again. But that's okay because I have the book and as I say it's a great book. If you haven't had a look at it then, then do. And uh, so next time I might try something different if I'm doing a toe up sock again but I think I'm a little bit addicted to these heel flaps, so we'll just have to see what's going to happen next time. Well, that's me for today. So those are, those are the things that I've been working on and really interested. As I say, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you've got any questions about any of the things that I've talked about or if there's something that you'd like to hear about. That would be fantastic. I did enjoy the comments that people sent me last week and I think I've responded to every... Not last week, it was two weeks ago. Good grief. Um, I think I've responded to everybody as well. So thank you very much for coming back and I'll see you again soon. Bye!